Hello everyone, how are you all in this bright and wonderful morning? Welcome to Module 3, Non-Digital and Digital Skills and Tools in Delivering Technology Enhanced Lesson. Teaching becomes rewarding when the learners get the most from the instruction as manifested in their performance. An important element in engaging the learners is when the strategy used by the teacher in delivering the lesson uses instructional material. When properly and appropriately used, it can spice up any lesson. These instructional materials may come in varied forms. One group is for the conventional or non-digital tools, and another group is called the digital tools or technologies. Hence, in this module, the following lessons are to be covered. But for this particular video, we are only going to focus on Lesson 1, which is the development and use of non-digital or conventional materials. We let's focus on the following lesson objectives. By the end of the lesson, students are expected to have described the procedures for developing conventional instructional materials. Number two, develop instructional materials based on a given topic and strategy. And number three, describe the factors to consider in revising media selections and delivery systems for given instruction. Teachers need instructional materials to enhance teaching and learning. Instructional materials are defined as print and non-print items that are rested to impact information to students in the educational process. Here are some examples of instructional materials. Instructional materials have several roles in the teaching and learning process, which include the following. Promote meaningful communication and effective learning. Ensure better retention, thus making learning more permanent. Help to overcome the limited classroom by making the inaccessible accessible. Provide a common experience upon which late learning can be developed. Encourage participation, especially if students are allowed to manipulate materials used. Instructional materials are the supplementary materials which help the teacher to make his or her presentation concrete, effective, interesting, meaningful, and inspiring. In any teaching and learning process, instructional materials play a vital role as they provide sensory experiences to the learners. The primary aim of teaching materials is to provide the teachers the layout of the way for teaching in the classroom. It is important to understand how to develop instructional materials. Instructional materials refer to any pre-existing materials that are being incorporated as well as to those that will be specifically specifically developed for the attainment of the lesson objectives. Now let's talk about the several factors in developing the instructional materials. Number one, develop a storyboard and working outline based on the subject goals and objectives. Number two, identify the existing institutional resources, including materials and the teacher's capability. Number three, 
the teacher may research off the shelf materials that have been developed by others to determine if their approach could be useful. Number four, explore the possibility of adopting concepts of other teachers without infringing on anyone's copy-protected design. Next, modify existing materials based on the objectives of the lesson. Number six, if the instructional materials are effective, you can share them with other teachers. And lastly, the teacher developer can also sell his or her materials available. Instructional materials are a great help in stimulating and facilitating the learning of the learners. According to Wright, as cited in Kakir, many media and many styles of visual presentation are useful to the language learner. All audiovisual materials have positive contributions to language learning as long as they are used at the right time and in the right place. In the teaching and learning process, learners use their eyes as well as their ears, but their eyes are the basic in learning. Now let's go to the non-digital or conventional instructional materials. Number one is the dioramas. Dioramas are small scenes created of layers of materials, all depicting a similar concept or theme. It will make the classroom to be creative and innovative. It is a fun way to build exciting scene in a small space. They usually display a historical time period, a nature scene, or a fictional situation. In developing diorama, choose a concept or a theme. Research the subject. Make rough sketch of your ideal diorama. Make a list of all the items you'll need and gather all your supplies. Five is select a container box. Next is the nature table. This is a table that contains objects and or scenes related to the current season or upcoming festival or a symbol of an ecosystem. Children love to follow the natural changes that the world offers each month and classroom decorations reflect these. Next is the writing board. A writing board can display information written with chalk, chalkboard or a blackboard, or special pens, such as the whiteboard. Although there are usually more effective methods of transmitting information, the writing board is still the most commonly used visual aid by the teachers. Now here are some suggestions of using writing boards effectively. Number one, keep the board clean. Two, use chalk or pens that contrast with the blackboard of the board so that students can see the information clearly. Three, make text and drawings large enough to be seen from the back of the room. Four, prepare complex drawings in advance. If very complex, an overhead transparency or slide may be preferable. 5. Underline headings and important or unfamiliar words for emphasis. 6. Do not talk while facing the board. 7. Do not block student views of the board. Stand aside when writing or drawing is completed. And number 8. Allow sufficient time for students to copy the information from the board. Another non-digital or conventional material used by teachers is the flip chart. A flip chart is a large tablet or pad of paper, usually on a tripod or a stand. 
Now here are some suggestions of using the flip chart. 1. Use wide tip pens or markers. Markers with narrow tips produce printing that is difficult to read. 2. Print in block letters that are large enough to be read easily from the back of the room. 3. Use different colored pens to provide contrast. This makes the pages visually attractive and easier to read. 4. Use headings, boxes, cartoons, and borders to improve the appearance of the page. 5. Use bullets to delineate items on the page. Leave plenty of white space and avoid putting too much information on one page. Crowded and poorly arranged information is distracting and is difficult to read. When pages are prepared in advance, use every other page. If every page is used, colors will show through and make text difficult to read. Have masking tape available to put pages up around the room during brainstorming and problem-solving activities. To hide a portion of the page, fold up the lower portion of the page and tape it. When ready to reveal the information, remove the tape and let the page drop. And lastly, face the students and not the flip chart while talking. Another non-conventional or non-digital material commonly used by teachers is the zigzag board such as the one in the picture. It is a multi-ball board series of three or four rectangular boards. They are joined together along the sides by hinges so that they can easily be folded and carried. Each board can be of different type, for example, a whiteboard, a chalkboard, a flanner, flannel board, and so on. The size of the boards for the zigzag multi-board depends on what you want to use them for. Next is the wall display. Displaying items on a classroom wall is a well-known tried and tested educational method. A wall display is a collection of many different types of items and materials put upon a wall to make an interesting and informative display. In a classroom, the display can consist of students on own work. In development work, in development work, it can be used to convey information to the community. Next, we have rope and pole display board. This board consists of two parallel horizontal poles tied loosely together with rope. Visual aids such as posters can be pinned to the rope. This kind of display board is invaluable where there are few solid walls for displaying information. It has no solid backing and can be made quickly for teaching, training, and work when working with communities. Now here are the guidelines when designing conventional instructional materials. Number one is unity. Use only one idea for each visual aid and include a headline. Number two, simplicity. Make ideas and relationships simple and easy to recall. Avoid cluttering a visual with too much words, numbers, or graphics. The audience should be able to grasp the concept in 10 to 15 seconds. 3. Legibility. Make letters big and readable for all in the audience. 4. Consistency. Use the same type, style, and art style. 5. Clarity. Avoid type that is too small to read and avoid all caps. 6. Quality. Make it neat and professional. And remember to proofread. Now that ends our lesson. I hope you learned something. Now, what questions do you have regarding the topic?
Now for your assignment, discuss the importance of using non-digital technology in the teaching learning process. Once again, thank you very much for listening and have a great day everyone. Bye!